it took me seven months to scratch build this spaceship right here this was a crazy project with tons of pieces and details and here's that entire journey compiled on a single video welcome to cut transform glue actually when i started this project i wasn't sure at all of how i wanted this spaceship to look like i wasn't sure of its shape but i knew i wanted it to to be like a sniper spaceship so i decided to start this project by creating the sniper itself and then later build the spaceship around it and to create this sniper, I began by grabbing some cool looking greaves in my collection, and laying them out on my cutting mat, and then using a variety of techniques, I began putting it together. To glue the pieces together, I'm using CA glue, sometimes I use the weld bond type of glue, and I'm also using some car body filler to cover some gaps. And I'm also eventually throwing some coats of primer to see the pieces coming together and to check the dimensions. Right here for instance, I'm using some leftover laser cut MDF pieces to put together a box that will later be the ammo box for the sniper. In this part of the process, I'm combining the laser cut MDF with styrene and to create the round corners, I'll use more card body filler and then sand it on my mini disc sander. Usually, once I've made the overall shape of the thing I'm creating, I start adding details to it and this is what I'm doing right here. I'm using more laser cut MDF detail pieces uh, on top of it to add detail. I also sometimes at this part of the process decide to remove some material, uh, for instance right here I'm creating a chamfer on the bottom of the ammo box to make it look interesting and I cover the, the holes that was left with some styrene. In this project I also decided to try something different and I used some uh, fake Lego pieces to create an attachment point from the ammo to the sniper body. As a last touch to the ammo box, I chose to use this interesting looking ceramic piece right here on the side of it. I'm gluing it really carefully and then I threw a coat of primer in. And I did the same thing to all of the other pieces of the sniper. Now here's something funny, once I finished the sniper, the gun, uh, the design of the spaceship came to me. Uh, I was sitting drawing and I had this crazy idea right here. Okay, so now that I have the design of the spaceship kind of uh, figured out, or at least the, the basic shapes of it, let's say, I decided to start by creating the middle frame. So these, for instance, are some random uh, laser cut MDF pieces that I have in my collection. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll use uh, these pieces, cutting them and gluing them together with CA glue and bake soda uh, to create the shapes that I drew on the night before. This black shape right there is an older TV remote and I will use it to create a middle body segment uh, that will later hold the sniper. But to make it look interesting, I'm gluing some air vents that I got from uh, dead laptops and on the underside of it I glued some metal mesh. I've added even more structure to the frame I was working before and the TV remote goes right in the middle of it. Now in my head when a gun that is that big shoots it kind of has to, to rock back. Uh, it made sense in my mind at the time so I'm making right here a rail so that sniper can rock back and forth when it shoots. And as you just saw, I've used some laser cut MGF pieces and some styrene to create that rail system. Now right here, something very important happened. Uh, I was kinda a month or maybe two months in into the project. And at this point, I was able to get a 3D printer. Now, if you're an old subscriber to my channel, you know that the 3D printer kind of changed how I approach the scratch building. 
And to be honest, it, it did that from the start, as you can see by the wing segments. I made a basic frame and I built the wing segments with styrene uh, glued around that basic frame. But of course, I was still using and I still do use uh, lots of griblies. And right here, I'm using some interesting griblies uh, to, to create some uh, thrusters on each wing. In my collection of griblies, I found some rectangular aluminum bars, so I decided to use the 3D printer to create some angles and, and put together with the aluminum bars a frame to hold the entire spaceship. To me, this is where the 3D printing kind of shines. Uh, I was able to make something that is lightweight, but also super sturdy, and it helps the project to move forward uh, quickly. I could rely on a 3D printer to, to create a decent and strong frame, and really just focus on the griblies to, to make it look cool and interesting. Then I hit the aluminum bars with some styrene, and then I made some resin cast pieces to connect the aluminum frame to the middle one. Then I kept adding some griblies, some MDF pieces, some styrene, and everything I had in hand to, to make that Y-shaped uh, frame look interesting. And this right here is a central arm that will connect the Y-shaped frame uh, to the middle one and to, to make it even more sturdy. Uh, these X looking uh, shapes right here will join the, the, the wing segment pieces together uh, from the outside to, to also make it more reliable. As you can see at this point I also began kind of experimenting with some brass inserts. And from then on, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda went crazy with the 3D printing. I was experimenting with Fusion 360 and, and I was kinda getting good at the software. And yeah, I was creating some really interesting looking pieces for the project. But uh, I, of course, I didn't abandon the, the gribbling and the laser cut pieces because they, they complement each other. Right here I made some fins to the back side of the Y-shaped frame. At this point in the project, the spaceship was really coming together. And I found this interesting grip right here that I decided would later hold the engine array. So now let me show you guys how I made the engine array. I first made this piece right here which was glued to the bottom of the black gribbly. Then I used it to align some uh, styrene strips on the side and as I'm an anxious person I, I gave it a first coat of primer and then I made this piece right here which will hold the nozzles. Now each nozzle is composed of a tip of a drinking beverage, a metal ring and of course a 3D printed piece that connects the three of them together. From the inside and on the middle of it I hit an M4 board with CA glue and tons of baking soda and it screws right in place. Okay so then it was just a matter of adding as much detail as possible. I'm using lots of griblies, some laser cut pieces, and of course, lots of wires. I kept adding lots of pieces to the engine array, even after what I thought was the final cord of primer, and this right here is the result. So this is the engine array, this is the piece that I love the most in this entire project. I was taking one of my daily walks and I found this gribby right here on the streets. So I began by giving it some shininess, uh, chucking it to my drill press. And then I started making some pieces and combining the 3D printed pieces with some cool looking griblies uh, to make this interesting metal piece uh, to look like a radar dish. 
I made this uh, three-eyed frog with an open mouth uh, to be on the outside of the radar dish on the metal piece and it, it has some brass inserts so that I can attach some uh, interesting buttons to, to the outside of it and I made the attachment point from that uh, structure uh, to the central arm of the spaceship. Okay guys, so now let me show you how I made this piece right here, which I call the Shell Crusher. So I was thinking about the concept of a sniper that floats on space and, and, and I thought that it could create some uh, dangerous debris kind of floating on space like the shells of the bullets and so yeah the sniper had to have a shell crusher something that will catch uh, the shells from the bullets and crush them and send them safely back to earth for recycling of course so yeah as you just saw I made it using lots of agreeably some styrene and some details with the 3d printing At this point, I also thought that the barrel uh, of the sniper could get real hot uh, when it's facing the sun. There's no atmosphere on space, of course. And so I decided to create a structure which I call kind of the heat shield for the barrel of the sniper. Nothing too crazy right there, just some 3D printed uh, rings with the diameter of the uh, gun barrel, uh, some MGF and some griblies. Okay, so now let's talk about the maneuverability of the spaceship as it is floating on space. Uh, so I made this design right here, a kind of a mini thruster, and I'm gluing a couple of these uh, to uh, the front and the back wing segments, one at the top and one in the bottom. And I also made this uh, cool looking structure uh, to the back of the back segment. Okay, so now it's time to do something that I really love to do, and that is to add some surface detail. In this part of the process, I just go looking for the coolest and tiniest griblies I have, and I glue them to the surface of the model, not worrying too much, just having some fun and populating it with detail as much as I can. Actually, at this part of the process, I'm trying to, to overdo it. The trick right here is that uh, when it feels it is uh, kind of too much, it, it actually isn't. Uh, the primer kind of brings it all together nicely. And as you can see, I use it all from the dead electronic pieces to the 3D printed ones. Oh, and by the way, uh, the surface detail pieces that you guys are watching right now are available for my patrons on the Combat Robot tier. Uh, so check my Patreon. Uh, the link is on the description box below. I also have a coffee account. And so, yeah, if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, uh, it is super helpful. The link is also below. And thank you so much for the amazing support. In this part of the process, I decided to glue this big piece right here. This is a really reinforced piece that goes in the bottom of the spaceship so that I can put a steel bar uh, through it and keep the spaceship on a nice angle when I'm displaying it. Now the only thing left to do was to prime every single piece of this project. And as you can see, there are tons of pieces on it. And that leads me to painting. On Photoshop I came up with this uh, color scheme right here, which is basically a pearl white, a black, some grays, a gunmetal color of course, and a green which is an accent color. In this project I also did my lazy chipping effect, which is basically chipping the second coat of color uh, as soon as it sets uh, with anything I can, my fingers, some q-tips and maybe some sharp tools. I have a video right here in the channel that explains the whole uh, concept of the lazy chipping but yeah, you just have to basically be super careful and chip the paint. Using lots of airflow and little paint flow I'm doing some shading with some black color on the top of the white one.
Now here's something that the 3D printing can also help you with. You can make some real thin and precise stencils for your painting process. After a while this was the result and I was very happy with it. And as with every other color in this project, I did lazy chipping. If you have a 3D printer yourself or if you know someone who does, I, I think you really should try this technique, it is super helpful. It took me a lot of time but I finally managed to paint every single piece of this project. Now it's time to start the wash. Now the wash process is basically making a real thin paint, uh, in this case I'm using some oil paints, uh, but yeah, the idea is to make a thin paint that will go inside each and every detail of the pieces. So you, you make the piece dirty and then you clean it and you repeat this process uh, until every single detail of the piece uh, looks more visible, like in this example right here. It is also a super time consuming process, but it is a fun one. I kind of feel like the wash process brings life to the pieces. After it is uh, set, you can apply the final coat of matte varnish and the pieces have uh, its final look. But wait, don't go anywhere yet because I still have one more process and that is to add the final details, wires, metal details, anything that looks interesting and that uh, has no paint on it. I like to, to use the texture from the raw material. I also make some, some uh, holes on the model. Uh, this is kind of nerve wracking, not gonna lie. But yeah, I like to add these uh, tiny details uh, to, to, to better tell the scale of the model. Uh, yeah, it makes a whole difference. At this point, I also did some burning of the metal rings of the engine array. And this right here is the end result. This is a project that I had no idea of how it was going to end. I only had the basic concept in my head uh, for the sniper, for the gun. Uh, but yeah, it shows itself to me uh, when I started working at it. If you watched this far in the video, thank you so much. And I'll talk to you guys on the next one.